Okay, I think we're going. <laughs> Thank you everyone for your patience. Hey, welcome to our studio here in beautiful downtown Salt Lake. My name is Greg Lewis uh, of Metastock. I'm the marketing director here and joining me in the studio today is Kelly Clement, who is my... Uh, yes, yes. So uh, I appreciate your patience. Um, Tip typically, I'm the one behind the controls because I'm the marketing guy, and uh, since I'm presenting today, Kelly's behind the controls, and uh, he's very gracious to do so. Uh, I don't know if any of you ever actually tried to do a live. Well, I should point out that we are, uh, as of a few months ago, we typically broadcast simultaneously on GoToWebinar as well as YouTube. And that brings with a whole set of challenges technologically that we've had to overcome. And we pretty much burned through the bugs, but there's still a few things. So we, uh, again, we apologize. We typically, the last few times, have started a little late. Uh, but it's a good time to point out that if you are watching the Sun Go to webinar and are having issues, you can flip over to YouTube and vice versa. It's also a good time to point out that if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and ask them in either the chat box on GoToWebinar or on YouTube. On YouTube, there's a little bit of a delay, about a minute, so I may not see them right away. And if I don't, I think Kelly's going to go ahead and watch the chat as well. Say hello, Kelly. Hello, everyone. Good to be here with you as well. <laughs> so uh, we're both watching chat. Uh, so enough, enough of all that. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I have to actually put my glasses on because now it's getting real. All right, as per usual, we have to start with a little disclaimer. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. That should make sense to everyone. Um, basically, there's a risk inherent in trading. Uh, I'm not a professional trader. I can't legally advise you on trades. So we will have specific trading examples. I'm in no way telling you you should uh, execute those trades. Now, today the subject is, my first subject is where did I leave my water? I guess I can take care of that later. Uh, today the subject is finding a trading system that's right for you. Now, before we start, I'd like to ask everyone who's currently listening to go ahead and type in chat the answer to the question, what kind of trader are you? Okay, that's a, an intentionally vague question, but just right now in the chat box, just answer the question, what kind of trader are you? I'll give you a moment. My, yeah. While my coworker finds me some water. Okay. I'm not seeing many responses. Don't be shy. Oh, well, of course, there's a delay at any rate. The question of the day, what kind of trader are you? OK, I'm starting to get some responses. Uh, anything good product says he's a day trader. He or she, excuse me, is a day trader. On the other side, not seeing anything. Oh, so many shy people. OK, well, I think we can all imagine a, a great deal of responses to that sort of question, because again, it is a fairly vague question. And excuse me, thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. So uh, let's talk about some of the possible answers. Okay. 
So first, it could, as, as anything good products pointed out, he or she is a day trader. Well, that's one type of trader. You can be a position trader, a swing trader, a day trader. That's basically saying what sort of periods you trade in. You know, are, do you, are you a day trader? I think we all understand conceptually what that means. A position trader may trade, stay in a position for months and years at a time, and a swing trader is somewhere in between. Uh, another way to describe yourself as a trader is uh, what you're trading. Oh, I'm getting more responses in. Uh, someone says they're learning options. Okay, that's exactly what we're talking about now. So another way to define yourself as a trader is what exactly are you trading? Another person says momentum. That's another thing we'll talk about in just a second. Another person says swing options. So um, I think you're getting the fact that there's a lot of different types of traders and there are a lot of different types of traders in different ways and every trader uh, has, I think we get the point. So uh, another t uh, type of trader could be technical or fundamental. Uh, here at Medstock, we're by definition technical traders because that's what our software does. Uh, I think you probably understand that technical trading means you're using things like price and uh, volume to make your decisions with charts and things like that. A fundamental trader would be more interested in earnings and uh, financials and things like that to make their decisions. Uh, then as, um, let's see, who was it? S Browser Sync said he's a, oh, excuse me. Tracy Thomas says he or she is a momentum trader. Well, that is one type of technical trader. So you understand that stocks have personalities, and uh, some people might be watching that trend. They're, they want to follow that trend and jump on board with that trend. Some people are more, more concerned about momentum, the, the, the velocity, the, the, the spike of that trend, while other people more, may be more concerned about uh, the breakouts, you know, breakaways from the, the uh, resistance and the uh, support. Excuse me, water break. Okay. Another type of trader. At a very basic level, you're either a conservative trader or you're a risk tolerant trader, right? I'm gonna guess that most of you are conservative traders, but who knows? We could have a bunch of people out there that are willing to really throw a lot into one trade. Um, who's to say what's really smart or not? It really depends on your budget and your lifestyle and your, your heart rate, you know, what kind of pressure you can take as a trader. But I think we can see here that there's all kinds of different types of traders. Uh, and today we kind of want to talk about, despite the differences, regardless of what ty type of trader you are, you can still find, of course, systems and strategies that work for you and uh, that help you dis despite what kind of trader, or, or because of what kind of trader you are. Uh, I think you all recognize this. It's just a an image. I haven't opened up the software yet. This is an image I took of what Microsoft to, uh, this afternoon sometime. Now, uh, I won't go ahead and go so far as to ask you, but um, just con consider this. What are you seeing right now on this chart? What is this chart telling you? Well, I'll just ask. Somebody tell me what's the first thing they see when they see this chart? What's the first thing that stands out to you? What's the first piece of information this chart gives you? Okay, while I'm waiting for that, I'll go ahead and proceed because, again, there's sort of a delay sometimes. Uh, well, the first thing you're going to notice is the price, right? Uh, this chart was still during uh, trading hours today, so it wasn't the close. But the, when I took this screenshot, the price was at 137 and 61 cents. So you can tell right here you got an open, uh, high, low close. So the chart tells you that very important information. Additionally, this chart gives you a lot of information about what's happened previously, right? Now again, this is just a snapshot, a snapshot in time of this particular security. It doesn't really tell you anything about the market generally. It doesn't tell you anything about the sector generally. It doesn't tell you anything about the stock before April of this year. Um, now there's some people that can look at this and say, okay, I already know based on what I'm seeing whether I might consider trading, uh, buying or selling this stock. Uh, by the way, today we'll be talking primarily about stocks. Um, but a lot of people are like, I don't see thing, I don't see enough information here. You can already see a trend developing here if you're a trend trader. You can see one that's here. You can see a trend that was here. It's actually gone a little sideways as of late. So you can get a lot of information from a chart, but with the advent of systems and technical analysis and indicators, you can get a lot more information. And which of these systems to use is sort of the question. Uh, I just took a screenshot of a bunch of different systems I pulled off the internet today. You can see there's hundreds of them. There are literally hundreds of these sorts of things. 
And uh, some of those here on this image you see on screen are included in Metastock. Some are not. I didn't really pay too much close. I just threw, threw some up. Um, but the point was to let you know that there's a lot of different systems. And I'm curious, as you guys glance through this, oh, somebody, somebody identified anything good product, identified a double top on that last, on that last thing. So there's, um, there's a good example of just glancing at a chart and being able to get some good information. All right. Um, but today we're going to talk about what systems might work for you and how to find out what those systems might be. So let's go ahead. I think this is where I say let's move into Metastock. Yep, that is. So let's move into Metastock. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Metastock is charting software. We'll talk a little bit more later about what Metastock is and who we are. But right now, let's just kind of focus on the matter at hand. OK, uh, we just had a chart. So let's go ahead and open up a chart in Metastock really quick. Uh, how about let's see? We'll go Netflix. I'm doing Netflix because uh, my wife and I are right now watching Stranger Things, so I have Netflix on my mind. All right, everybody got some data on here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up by applying a temple that just says clean. So I want to start from clean. So let's go back to that question. Uh, you've got a chart here. It gives you information. How useful is that information right now? Um, now, because this is an active chart and not just a static image like I was showing you earlier, you can do some things that will give you a little more information. You, you can zoom out and kind of go back in time, right? See how this stock is. You can definitely see some trends. Uh, trend up, trend down, and pretty much sideways as of late. Um, you can also see, uh, because this is software, you can add a lot of different things to it. You can add volume. You can add a... a uh, yeah, moving average or really whatever you want to. You can change it to candlesticks. These are just bars. There's a lot of different things we can do, and actually uh, a lot of different softwares can do. Uh, and before we go into which type of system might be right for you, let's just talk about one system to sort of get our minds around what a system is and what an, an indicator is. And if uh, this is nothing new to you, I apologize. Uh, I do try to make this a presentation for several different levels. Those who might already understand this <laughs> need a refresher, and those who really just don't understand conceptually what we're even talking about when we're talking about an indicator. So let's demonstrate that right now. Uh, one of the most popular indicators uh, that we hear about, of course, is the MACD. So I'm just going to take a MACD. And, and you see in Metastock, you have a list of, again, we have tons of indicators and systems. Uh, right here at the top is the MACD, and I'm just going to throw it on the chart. OK, so right away, you can see we have added information. Um, now, uh, another thing that we're going to talk about today that we may not talk about as much is, of course, we use Metastock to find out trading opportunities uh, and to analyze those opportunities today. Today, we're going to talk about Metastocks, again, more on an um, educational level. So uh, let's assume you don't know what the MACD is, and you want to find out what the MACD is. Well, one quick way to do that that you can do in Metastock is you can click on this little guy here. I click on this line, which is the MACD line, and it gives you a basic overview of what's going on here. Uh, it says the moving average, uh, and MACD stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence, is calculated by subtracting the value of a 26 period uh, moving a exponential moving average and a 12 period exponential moving average. A nine period dotted exponential moving average is also added. So that's what this dotted line here. So this red line is the difference between a 12 and 26 e, uh, EMP, and the dotted line is a nine period X, uh, EMP, excuse me, EMA. Uh, all right, now that gives you some information. Uh, at least we know, oh, let's look at interpretation. The basic MACD trading rule is to sell when the MACD falls below its nine period uh, signal line. Similarly, a buy signal occurs when the MACD C arises above its signal line. So you can see here, this is the signal line. And when it goes above the nine period uh, signal line, then that's a buy opportunity. And when it goes below, that's a sell opportunity. Now, uh, any of you that use Metastock know there's a little easier way to do all this. You can go ahead and just right click, or I should say, use the expert advisor. Excuse me. The expert advisor is this little dude in a derby hat which means it's really smart. 
And if you want to go ahead and put the MACD on here, you just select it and you say attach. And now magically, you have a lot more information. So Metastock doesn't just show you the basic MACD, but it also provides buy and sell signals, as well as a little bit of information down here in terms of bullish and bearish ribbons and additional information in, in, in terms of these colored bars. And uh, to find out even more about that, you just right click and you can go to the commentary. And it shows you, you see this little diamond upside down uh, triangle? It shows you by date what's going on on that particular day. So for instance, if I want to look at the last buy signal, it tells me, it says the MACD can, can oh, excuse me, currently the MACD is in a bullish, is bullish since it is trading above its signal line. The MACD crossed above its signal line z zero periods ago because that's the day that the sell signal or the buy signal appeared. And then it gives additional information. It says the MACD is not in an overbought or, over, or sold, oversold range. Uh, that occurs when you can see these colored bars, like right here, this would be an oversold, and if it were green, it would be an overbought range. Uh, also, another thing to understand about the MACD is um, the, 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 the point of convergence and divergence is when this red line uh, converges or diverges, um, excuse me, when it diverges from the, the price of the security, then that's that's an indicator that something's about to change. So that's just basically a high level view of what a system is, in this case, the MACD. Now, a lot of times in this sort of demonstration, I'll go, all right, well, let's check how the MACD does against this security or multiple securities. But today, we're really trying to find out how to find a security that works for you. So we're going to shake things up a little bit. And um, before I do that, let me see if, oh, somebody's already. <laughs> Okay. Let me just, uh, I'm sorry, I can't get my chat window. Uh, I'm getting it on. Uh, okay, what the hell is going on? This is supposed to be Greg Lewis, not a sales pitch for Metastock. Um, that's an interesting comment. Uh, ultimately, we'd love it if you bought Metastock, but today I think we can go beyond that and get into some things that can go beyond Metastock, really. So thank you, Robert, for that comment. Uh, we try to be transparent here, so we share with the audience. Uh, otherwise, that, other than that, I have no comments or questions. Okay, so uh, right now, let's go ahead and talk about the Metastock System Tester. Okay. Now, uh, conceptually, what system testing is, is the ability to um, backtest uh, on a security for a particular system. Uh, again, sorry if you've, this is something you already know, but backtesting conceptually is you are going to say, I want to run this system against the security over time, and if I bought or sold based on what the system tells me to do, how would that have affected the total revenue or the total success or failure against that security? Um, uh, a lot of times what you're going to do is back test one security against a group, excuse me, one system against a group of securities to see which one works best. Today we're going to go ahead and back test a bunch of systems against several securities to see which of those systems comes out on top and works uh, on those uh, securities. So uh, built into Metastock, we have right out of the box hundreds of systems and, and um, indicators. I've gone ahead and chose 55, and they're right here. Um, and the reason I've chosen them is, one, they're just basic all around securities. You don't have to have an add-on to have, excuse me, systems. You don't have to have an add-on to have them. And also, you don't, uh, they're not optimized. Uh, an optimized test is a little more um, intensive and takes a little more time, so I'm trying to keep things a little more brief here, so, and to make it simple. So we're going to go ahead and run these five uh, systems against the FANG, which is, I'm sure you guys know, uh, Facebook. And Amazon. and Netflix, and Google, or Alphabet. All right. Now, I already mentioned that we want this to be about you and finding out systems that work for you. So right away, it's important to understand that there are things you can do even at this level to make this more of a personalized experience to, be, uh, to work in the way that you, you would want it to work for your trading style. So 
uh, when you go into the system test, this first panel really is just showing you how the, um, the report will show on the final results, so we're going to just skip that. It's not really important. Um, the next panel, of course, is your account. Now, of course, we all have different amounts in our accounts, and we're all willing to take different risks, and that's one of the things we talked about that makes, you know, what kind of trader are you, how much you're willing to risk, and how much you are capable of trading, and how much you would trade even if you could. Uh, in this case, well, let's just say, uh, there's different ways you can do that. In the system test, you could say number of units, meaning uh, you trade as whatever units you indicate over here when you have available, based on the system, when you have available funds, then uh, there's transaction costs, and then what we're going to talk about is percent of available equity. So I'm going to say, okay, I've got $100,000 in my account, and I'm willing to trade 30% uh, of that equity when there's a buy or sell opportunity. I should actually back up and say we are doing both long and short. You could do just long and short, but I'm going to do both long and short. Also, in terms of records, I'm just going to say a year. I mean, you, you should probably go back farther than that, uh, maybe five years, but just to keep this test brief, I'll, I'll say one year. And then um, as far as your brokerage is concerned, uh, you can also do things like say, well, you know, your account is going to have some interest in it, and you might want to indicate that here, either out or into your account. And also trading generally costs money. So this is your uh, transaction fee, let's say $5 to get in and out of the trade. And we'll hit OK. And we'll go ahead and start this system test. And this shouldn't take very long because, like I said, I tried to keep things pretty brief. Okay, let's review the results. Any questions? Oh. Um, so I'm, uh, I, I, I beg your pardon, I'm a little distracted by some of the comments. Uh, some, one person asked, does the MACD show a divergence from what the seminar was supposed to be versus what it is? And transparent, where is Greg Lewis? Um, I'm not certain what Mr. Gallinari is getting at, but I am Greg Lewis, so I think I'll just, um, uh, Robert, if you don't mind, ignore your comments from this point out. All right. Um, and anybody on uh, YouTube have any questions? No. All right. Okay, so these are the results of the test. Now, uh, what we're seeing here is a chart that shows, uh, in this case, net average um, profitability. And let's get to open this up a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this is I, this is another point for you to uh, look at the results and realize if this is the results. You know, it's not just about which one had the best profit. Of course, that's what we're most interested in. Uh, this list here is the list of the systems we tested. And the results here are an average of the four securities that we tested. So in the case of PS, and by the way, PS is Power Systems, CCI, uh, there is a net profit of 5489 uh, that was the average profit for all of the four fangs that we put in, the four securities. Um, then we see that the best profit, the best single profit was 9,600. That's not bad. Uh, we saw the word profit was zero. And this is an interesting thing, the average trade. So we did this just for one year. This thing only traded four securities twice. Um, so that might work for you if that's the kind of trader you are. But if you're like me or a lot of traders, you probably want a little more activity going on. So let's look at some of these other things. We've got um, one here for 30 on the PS percentage crossover. Uh, cycle progression had 35. Let's go ahead and look at cycle progression. Now, uh, again, you can look at any of these, and this is your thing, and, and you like, you know, I'm just taking examples that seem to work for me. Uh, but if this was you, you could say, oh, look at the one that has two or the one that has the most, um, uh, the most uh, return. But let's look at cycle progression right now. Now when you open up that, you're going to see the specific securities that we looked at. All right, uh, right away we can see Google did the best out of those four. Uh, we got a 15, let's just dig into Google X right away. Uh, if you're familiar with Metastock, you're familiar with this, um, this system report. Uh, regarding this particular instance, we see that we had a profit of 15, 7, 117. 
and a, the buy and hold profit, well, there wasn't a buy and hold profit. It would actually have declined on the buy and hold. So at least we beat the buy and hold. And that's pretty good information. You can dig into this as much as you want. Uh, there's a lot of information about you know longest favorable, um, final equity, uh, interest charge. You can also look at the equity curve. That's actually a pretty good equity good curve. Um, let's go ahead and throw this on the chart. Get out of here. I'll get out of here. And let's. What you're seeing here is whenever you plot a chart after you run a system test, it shows you every instance of a transaction. Uh, that's not what I want to look at right now, so I'm going to go ahead and apply a template to clean up this chart. And go ahead and take a moment to see if I have any questions. I don't see any questions. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, this is the chart of what? Oh, Alphabet. Alphabet that we cite and the. The system that seemed to work was the PS cycle progression. So let's go ahead and chart that on here. Now, when you have a chart like this, I should also mention um, you see me opening up charts and having to clean it off and make it just so. And get the way Metastock works, once you decide what system you want or whatever you want to put on most of your charts, you can make that a default and it'll just automatically come up on the chart. And also, in the case of uh, templates, a lot of our systems that have templates, so you can just right click on here and say add the template. But in this case, for the, the the uh, system that we decided we wanted to look at closer was uh, power system cycle of progression. And uh, for that, I'm just going to go ahead and throw, uh, excuse me, let's go ahead and throw an um, indicator on here. So we look for PS cycle progression. And I'll throw that right up here. All right, now, if you look at that, so I don't really know what's going on here. It's obviously some sort of cycle. and uh, it also has a crossover, um, and you're saying, well, I don't know anything about this. Let's find out more about it. And again, there's a couple ways you can do that. One, we can go into the um, help, and just let's just type in cycle progression. Oh, let's try and spell, too. Uh, it says the cycle progression system is designed to anticipate short-term swings in price activity. The system identifies when there are no, when there are more down days and up days in the last five days, and then opens and enters a long position. It then exits and enters a short position on the reverse condition. The system is designed to capture very short cycles and should be used with caution. While it is very good at capturing profits on the majority of trades, no loss protection mechanism has put into place. Stop loss orders should be used to prevent the few failing trades from removing all acquired profits. All right, um, this is a good time to mention that uh, when you do a system test, generally speaking, it doesn't even include a uh, stop loss. And if you do decide, hey, I want to, let's just say, enter a stop loss, um, you can go ahead and go into the system if it's editable and go to stops and place that information in there so you can put that information in your in your systems but default by default uh, we don't have stop loss in our test because some people don't want to do it on the test for whatever reason all right so uh, now we know it's for short cycles let's go ahead and look at the was Excuse me, the, um, what is this called again? Cycle progression. Greg, Cycle you do have a few questions in, okay. uh, in uh, YouTube. Uh, hello, does Metastack have a trading journal component? Uh, if I'm honest, eBrowser sync, I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, I'll have to get back with, or, or excuse uh, uh, me, oh, he goes on, I beg your pardon, yeah. just a second. I.e., is there a way to analyze trades you actually placed uh, systems you actually tried to see the stats on there or went, or is there Metastack only theoretical or historical back testing? Uh, I don't believe we have any way to monitor historical. I mean, you'd have to take your own notes. I think, if, if, if I understand the question, is that what? Uh, yeah. Metastock does allow you to take put notes on your chart, and Metastock will remember all your oh, charts. Oh well, so yeah. I mean, uh, excuse that, me. So. I don't think that's what he was asking them. Well, I think he's journal, asking if, that would be something. Yeah. So yeah, to be sure, you can customize charts anyway, and you can do any markup on your charts and all the things like that. And maybe I misunderstood the question, uh, S Browser Sync. But so far as keeping some sort of journal on the side that uh, journalizes all your system results. And you can go into, well, I'll show you. 
to answer that. And I'm not sure if this is really answer to the question either, but when you go into system, you see that little R here, that means the report has been done on that, and you can pull up the reports you've done in the past, right? And it shows you a list of the reports and the dates that they did them. So you can go back and look at them, but I don't know, I, if I don't know if that's what you're asking. So no way to upload actual trades and trading activity. N not, not if I understand your question, there, there is an S browser sync. Uh, on the other side, I don't see any other questions. All right. Um, oh, so let's go ahead and add a, the expert advisor so we can see the buy and sell signals for this particular system. PS cycle progression, there it is. And say attach. Okay, now we clearly see that, yeah, it is a crossover that you want to use to buy and sell for the system. So again, this is an educational process. You, you, you probably had never heard of, I don't know if you've heard of power system cycle progression. I have heard of it. I don't know a hock, heck of a lot of it. Um, but that's uh, basically, you can see it's also obviously a very short cycle. You're getting buy signals a couple times a week on this. And this is a daily chart, by the way. Uh, to even understand more about what's going on here, we can go ahead and add the expert advisor commentary. Again, that gives you commentary based on the day that you're looking at. So let's go ahead and put it on the day of the last uh, sell. It says in trading long positions, exit all long positions today. So it's saying to, you know, short. Um, if trading short positions, enter short today with market. Okay. Uh, it says it's designed to anticipate short-term swings in price activity. It identifies when there is more down movements than up movements in the fast last five periods. So that's kind of what we got before. All right, so again, uh, I'm not telling you that the cycle progression is the best system that you should use, uh, that, that anybody should use, that we should use today, but it's what came up today it, it did, for our particular test is one that's definitely worth looking, looking more into. Now, uh, one thing that you might have noticed is I'm not getting a buy or sell signal today. So no matter how good your system is that you drill into or how, uh, how much you decide, okay, this is, you know, let's say you've gone through this process and you, you might want to go through this process a lot. I mean, today I only uh, s tested 50 systems against four securities. You could go crazy and test all the systems that are available in Metastock or whatever system you're using and do it against the whole S&P 500 or the whole, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, of course, you probably want to keep them in a grouping. That makes sense. But you could get you know broader and more results, and then kind of dig into those. So that's what system testing helps you do, and helps you uh, realize what systems are going to work with the personality of stocks that you're looking at. Uh, having said all that, uh, you probably, after all, would be interested in finding a system that's showing a hit today. Now, this particular uh, system is not showing a hit on Alphabet today, so. What can you do to find that? Well, again, if you know Metastock, you've probably heard of our uh, Explorer. It's a scanner. Uh, basically, you can say, all right, now I, now I know I'm interested in the, um, the cycle progression, power system cycle progression, but I want to find something that's available for trade today. And the way our Explorer works is, again, we have a list of all the systems available to explore. In this case, there's a couple things I'm going to uh, explore. One. Uh, the thing we just talked about, which is down here, cycle progression signal. And I'm going to test it against the S&P 500 just for kicks. And uh, also, another thing I want to point out, um, you can set your own filters. So at, at a very, very simple level, I've set an additional filter because maybe I don't want to trade stocks that are over $200. So I've said, okay, only look for things that are over $200, or excuse me, under $200 at the close. That's what that C means. And whose volume is in excess of 50,000. So uh, that is uh, there as well as looking for the PS cycle progression. Now, when you do uh, multiple, um, when you're asking the explorer to look for multiple things, you have to tell it, okay, do you want it to look for everything and then look for everything again? Or do you want it to look through everything with the one filter and then just look what remains for the next filter? I never know a great way to explain that. I hope that makes sense. So right, right now I'm gonna say, okay, I want you to look at all of the S&P 500 for the price and volume that I'm looking for and only look for the results, only look in the results of that for the, um, the cycle progression signal. So 
That's what this means. And let's go ahead and start that exploration. Now here you can already see it's running Greg's P and B. That's my price and volume, and it's going through the S and P 500. And uh, like I said, it'll run through those first. And you can see right here what's waiting is the PS cycle progression. All right, while that's going, why don't I go ahead and see if there's any other questions? Uh, does MetaStock help understand options trading? Uh, yes, it does help understand options trading. Uh, I can show you one options tool uh, after, subsequent to this S browser sync. Um, and you can also do everything we're talking about on optionable um, securities. Um, and I'm trying to find other questions. I think that's it. I think S browser sync is the only one in the crowd that really wants to. Okay. All right, so it looks like this is run. Now, uh, again, it had 418 of the 500 that were within my criterion for price and volume. And then it had 80, uh, of those 418, it had 52 that were, that met the, uh, the criterion of the PS cycle progression. And we can see I had longs and shorts. I tested, or excuse me, scanned for both longs and shorts. Um, now, so I've got basically 52 securities here. I, I could run through these one at a time to sort of check them out, uh, see which one looks better. Um, and there might be a value to that, but you probably are in more of a hurry than to look individually at that many securities, especially if you're doing this uh, every day. So what I like to do is just go back out and run a system test against the report that I just did. So I'm going to run a system test on the, let's line that up and then I'll clarify what I'm doing. So we're going to, all right, so does that make sense? First, I said, OK, I want to find the system that I like. And I did that and by doing all the securities against those systems, uh, the four the FANG systems, uh, securities. Systems and securities, I'm sorry. Those are not interchangeable terms, <laughs> though I seem to be making them interchangeable. Um, then once I found a system I was interested in that looked like it could be more, you know, uh, more interesting to look at, which was in this case the PS cycle progression. I went ahead and uh, pulled that up on a chart and then t uh, found that I wanted to find opportunities today. And so I run a scan to find 50 or so securities that have an opportunity today. Now I'm taking those 50 secure securities that have an opportunity to trade today and throwing them back in the system tester to see which one of those would be, has tested best historically on this system. I feel like that explanation didn't help a lot, but I think you'll see what I mean here in a moment. So we'll start the system test, and it should just take a moment. All right. Now, unlike the last system test we did, this starts with security. So what's this list here is the list of securities we just tested against and they're only tested against the PS cycle progression. And what we have here is a list of um, net profit. So once again, when we're looking at this, make sure it is, don't just look, dig into the thing that is the most profitable, make sure it's profitable on your terms, right? Um, what, you know, how much was the profit? How many trades were there? Uh, what was the profit? Uh, what was the average? I think the most salient thing here would be how many trades you took. And, and it looks like all of these were pretty active. So let's just go ahead and look at the best equity. In this case, it's um, EQT. Let's move that. OK, as we dig closer, we see, uh, again, I think I tested this for a year. In the last year, we made a profit of 11,266, which beats the buy and hold. That's always good. It doesn't necessarily have to beat the buy and hold. Uh, it just depends on what kind of trader you are. So a lot of times, you know, if you did this on Apple, uh, yeah, you'd probably never beat the buy and hold because Apple's just been trading like crazy. And if you bought a year ago or five years ago, let's say, which is usually the kind of test I run, you're probably not going to beat that. But do you want to hold on to it for five years? What kind of trader are you? If you're not a long-term, you know, if it's not your 401k, if, if you're an active trader and you have an active account, you probably don't want to hold on to things that long. That's kind of what the question you have to ask yourself when you're, when you're looking at these. Okay, so let's go ahead and view this on a chart. Again, I have to take off this because that's not what I want. Uh, 
it would be convenient if we had a, a template for the system that I'm looking in today, but we do not. So I'm just cleaning it up first and then throwing that system back on here. And like I said, you could make it a template yourself, or not a template, but a default chart so that the, your, all your charts open up would have that built in there. So let's just really quick throw on the expert advisor on here. Okay, and right, see we, right here we see we have a, where are they? We have a sell opportunity. So remember there was that cycle indicator up here and this is the buy and sell signal. And in this case it's saying, uh, what did it say? It says it has to have uh, more down days and up days than the last five periods. Now it's apparent from this uh, chart that green doesn't necessarily mean it was up, it was an up day. As you can see, this was down, this was, this was up, this was down, down, so down. So three of the last five days were down. That's why it's saying, okay, this is a sell opportunity, right? Now, uh, you could be forgiven if you looked at this and said, well, that's an awful lot of buying and selling, and I'm not sure if this is something I'm really interested in anyway, and how do I know how it's going to work on this chart going forward? And that's really, you know, you never just look at one chart, you never just look at one system. You kind of look at a lot of things and see how they pan out. But let's say in this one chart, um, you kind of want to know, well, where's this price going, right? Now, we do have one um, a tool, and I just mentioned it to S Browser Sync about options. Uh, it's called the Forecaster. Let's get in here a little better. What the Forecaster is, let me open it for you. Now, some of you may or may not have seen this in the past. The Forecaster is wholly different than the rest of MetaStock, as you can see uh, immediately. And I'm not doing a presentation on the Forecaster today, so I'm not going to do a deep dive into it. But basically what it's doing is it takes these uh, recognizers here and says, okay, I see, I've noticed uh, in this case we don't have a recognizer that correlates directly with the uh, cycle progression, but we do have one that says five candles or five bars down. Where is that? Here it is, five bars down, more down. So now what you're looking at here is basically the... Um, the uh, forecaster has said, I've recognized five bars down or more historically. And over here, it'll tell you exactly how many times that's happened. It'll give you the exact specifics. But what it's laid out here is what we call a forecast cloud. And based on history, it's basically telling you this is what has happened to the price one, two, thirty. These are periods down at the bottom. Uh, after that recognizer has been recognized, in this case, five bars more down, which is essentially what the system is we're looking at uh, right now at any rate. So when you look at this, you're saying to yourself, well, I can see in the short term that this price has typically gone a little up when there's five bars or more down. And since we were talking about a short, that's not necessarily compliant with what we were thinking we might want to do with that stock. So again, that's not a tell-all but it's another confirmation, or in this case, it's not a confirmation for the security that was just up there. So, any questions? I see Kelly's been fast on the keyboards with some of your questions, so I will, um, da, 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 I think it looks like he's answered them, and I don't think there's really been any new ones anyway. All right, that about um, wraps up our discussion. So again, uh, what you can do with Metastock is, uh, with System Tester, determine what system really works well with the kind of stocks that you think you really want to work with. And once you've dug into that, you can dig in more with how that system works with the kind of stocks you're interested in and go from there. This is a fairly abbreviated discussion. I know uh, I kind of had to push through, but you can see how this could go a lot broader and you can do your testing in a lot broader fashion and come up with a lot more results and just go crazy with this. Right? You don't have to decide in one day how you're going to trade. You can decide over a long period how you want to trade. Okay, uh, at this point, uh, as Robert so graciously pointed out earlier, uh, some people might actually want to know how to get Metastock or understand what Metastock is. And really quick, I'll just tell you in, in, in wrapping this up, uh, Metastock's been around since 1982. We are, we've just been using Metastock to present all of this. I didn't deep uh, dive into all of the features. But just so you know, we've been around since 1982. That computer you see on the screen is actually from 1982. So <laughs> that's how long we've been around. Uh, we've also won the 
uh, Stocks and Commodities te uh, Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities Award, 27, 28 years. I don't think I've updated this chart. We've won a lot of consecutive years, at least 27 or 28 years. Um, and that's as voted by the readers of this very technical magazine. Uh, I show you this picture for one good reason. One, to let you know that this is everyone here employed at Metastock, or it was taken about a year ago. And uh, this just shows you that we're a lean and mean company. We're very dedicated to what we do. And uh, I should also point out in this picture that probably 90% uh, of the people you see here are either developers or support staff. There's very few marketing or sales staff. Uh, most of the people we employ are the people that really make our product what it needs to be. Uh, and also, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee on all of our uh, non-subscription non products. So uh, another thing I should point out before we discuss the particulars about how you can get Metastock and how much it is, is uh, that when you get Metastock, you're, you're not alone. You have, we have free world-class support. Uh, when I say world-class, I just showed you the picture. They're all here in the office, and they're all really good. And the average tenure of the support staff here at Metastock is like 13 years. It's some ridiculous amount. We have a uh, support. The oldest employee, I think, currently at Metastock is in support, and I think it's been, what, 20 years? When? Uh, yeah, so we have, we have some old-timers. I don't mean old-timers. I mean, you know what I mean. They're not old. <laughs> They've been with us for a long time. Uh, we also have our white glove service. So if you go ahead and get Metastock, uh, we have a dedicated staff member here who will help you get up and running and make sure that you have everything worked out. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one session uh, that you can schedule. We also have a whole bunch of uh, uh, free recorded training that you can take advantage of as well as our support website. So right now the best way you can get Metastock for the, the best um, value is to take advantage of our spring event, which is going on right now. So if you go to metastock.com slash ADMM59, uh, you can see that we have great deals on Metastock as well as some of our add-on products. We didn't really talk about add-on products today, but add-on products give you a lot of the indicators and systems that we were talking about, well, that we didn't talk about because they're, they're offered as a, a separate product by some of the most famous traders you have heard or have not heard of, like uh, John Bollinger and Dr. Elder and and whomever. We've got a whole library of those that you can look into. Uh, right now, you can get Metastock uh, for $4.99. That's a savings of $50. What that is is a one-time purchase of the software, and then you can get uh, a month free of our market data. That's a $59 value, and a free copy of Unleash the Power of Metastock, which is a video book uh, combo starring our very own Kelly Clement, who is behind the camera right now, or in front of the camera, whatever you say. Uh, and then also, if you're interested in our real-time product, that's the software for real-time and end-of-day are essentially the same, but the data is different. For real-time, you would use our, uh, our Zenith real-time data and news, which is a fantastic product and an amazing value for what you get. And right now, you can, you can get that for a free month when you get Metastock. Okay, and if you are interested, you can either go to this website that I've just identified you can also go there and just download the free e-catalog, which shows you more information about all the stuff here. And if you're so inclined, you can just call this number, 800-587-8057, or give us a click at the website I just showed you. Or if you'd like to chat directly, and we do have people on sales right in sales right now. It's only 453 local, so they're still here. Uh, chat anytime to metastock.com slash sales chat. Okay, if we don't have any other questions, and I don't think we do. All right. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I thank you, I uh, appreciate your attention and your uh, patience, and have a great day.